All right, guys, so we're gonna go through an example, the last example we got to in class. This is about a hydraulic lift. We're gonna use some fluid mechanics here uh, and be able to hopefully be able to solve this problem about the hydraulic lift, okay? So you can read the question there. I'm not gonna read it out to you, but the important things are that we have a radius up here, the smaller one. It says that the radius of this is 0.012 meters and then it tells us that the radius of this larger plunger right here is 0 .0, uh, sorry, 0 0.150 meters and it tells us that the weight of the car plus the plunger over here is 20,500 newtons just like that and uh, it tells us that the density of the lift fluid is 8.00 times 10 to the second kilograms per meter cubed. Nice density there. All right, you'll notice that all of these have three significant figures. All right, that's something I'm noticing here at the beginning before I do any, actually, uh, yeah, I just didn't write it down on that first one, one, two, zero. So there are three significant figures there, one, two, zero, three significant figures here, 205, three significant figures, one, five, zero, and three significant figures there. So all of those numbers have three significant figures. All right, so now the question is, if the two are at the same level, right? So that's what we're looking at right here. A, the two plungers are at the same level, then what import, what input force is going to be needed on the left-hand side, on the input plunger, okay? Well, let's talk about first why do we need a force there, right? Well, we know that the pressure has to be the same everywhere, right? As long as we're inside of the fluid, the pressure at all of these points inside the fluid has to be the same, right? In all directions. It, obviously, it'll be, it'll be a higher pressure deeper in the water, but at a given level, we're saying that the two plungers are at the same level, and if they're at the same level, then the pressure at point one has to be equal to the pressure at point two. Okay, that's assuming that the plungers are both at the same level. Now, conceptually, this may be a little bit difficult to, to kind of go along with just because we say, well, what exactly does that mean? Is, is that the case in the picture here? No. In this case, the plunger is definitely down below. Okay, so what we're saying is that the bottom of the plunger is here even with the bottom of this plunger right here. That's what's happening in part A. All right. Uh, that's important because that means that the fluid level will be the same on both ends. So if the fluid level is the same on both ends, then the fluid obviously is not causing a difference in pressure. Okay. So in order for the pressure to be the same on both sides, then I need to have the same pressure due to the car on the piston on this side as I do the piston on that side. So what we're going to say is that the pressure on side one needs to be equal to the pressure on side two. Now, earlier we did have the formula that said that pressure equals P naught plus rho G H, but in both of these situations, if we're looking at the bottom of the plunger and the bottom of the plunger is at the same level, then there is, that's kind of what we've been getting at here, there actually is no rho G H here. So we don't have to worry about that. So the pressure on the left-hand side is just the pressure ambient pressure above that, the pressure on the right hand is, is the pressure there. So what is causing pressure over on the right hand side? Well, it's the car and the, uh, the piston there, right? And we know that that pressure is equal to the force divided by the area over which it is exerted, all right? So because it is that, we know the force of the car and the piston, that's the weight, right? That's how hard it's pushing down on the liquid, and so that is going to be 20500, and then the area of that piston is going to depend on its radius, which we had earlier here, which was the 0 0.150. So we're gonna go pi times the radius, which was 0 0.150 squared. Now notice it was already in meters. If it's not in meters, you really do need to put it in meters first. They could have just as easily given any of these units in centimeters or, or millimeters or something else. 
they gave it to us in meters, therefore uh, we're, we're good to go. We can just put these numbers in. Okay, over on the left-hand side, we need the pressure to be the same. Now, again, we're going to use force over area. Of course, the area of the smaller plunger is significantly smaller. And so we're going to put pi times its radius squared, which is 0 0.012 squared. And I know there's a zero there, but mathematically it's not going to matter. We already talked about the significant figures thing. Okay. Um, all right, and so the top then is the force that must be exerted over on that left-hand side. And so now you should just be able to punch those numbers in, right? We go 20,500. We're going to divide by the 0 0.150, which is being squared, okay? Um, and then we're going to move the other number over. We're going to multiply both sides by the 0.012 squared. Do that on both sides. Okay, notice that if I multiply by pi, the pi and the pi are going to end up canceling out. And so that should give me my final force, which is 131. 0.2 newtons. So there you go. That's how much force you need. 131.2 newtons. And that's not a huge amount of force, right? That's uh, something that is certainly possible, okay, to be able to hold that up. Okay, so now the real question is, how is that going to change as the car moves up and down, right? So at this point, it looks like the car is already up. So in part B, it says the level of the plunger of the car is now 1.10 meters below the input plunger. So the question now is what force is required at this point if the car is lower. Now, why would the force be lower? Why would we, sorry, why would it change, I guess, is my question. So I'm trying to talk in a race at the same time, which is not working very well for me, obviously. Um, all right, so the question is, why would the force change, okay? Well, hopefully you've got that idea that you now understand that if the bottom of this plunger is lower, that means you now have a height of fluid here. Now that height of fluid is going to have a force and therefore pressure over on the left-hand side. So that is now going to assist you right, in holding the car up. And so the force should be, the force needed should be less now because now you have some fluid, a fluid a height differential over on the left-hand side that's gonna help support the car. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look and see if we can figure that out. So in this scenario, okay, we now still say the pressure on the left-hand side needs to equal the pressure on the right hand side okay now the pressure over on the left hand side now we can't ignore this rho gh because there is a height of fluid there we're going to now define zero if we go back up to the picture here this is going to be our zero point okay so the piston over on the right doesn't need that height. Now this works kind of like uh, gravitational potential energy. You can set your zero wherever you want. You should set up your zero in such a place that it makes the numbers easier to work with. You could technically set it up higher and then use negative heights and things like that, but that's usually a little bit more difficult for our brain to deal with. The math will work, right? But it tends to be easier on our minds and easier on the mathematics if we define a smart zero point. So I'm going to define the lowest point before I start getting into the fluid. I know the pressure should be the same at these two locations. All right. Now there's two different ways to do this. One is to just figure out the amount of extra force or pressure that I've got there. Okay. The other way is to actually go through and work through the whole problem. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up the whole thing just because it's good to see it laid out and make sense of it. All right. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to deal with the right hand side first because that's the simple of the two. The only pressure is the force over the area caused by the car and piston over here. 
Now, depending on how you did this, if in the first question you solved that whole number before you started rearranging things, you could just put that number in. Okay, but if you didn't, then that's fine. We're just gonna write 20500 force divided by the area, which is pi times 0 0.150 squared, just like that. And I don't have to worry about the units because the units are already all in SI, just like they should be. Okay, and then the left-hand side is now we've got two things there, right? We've got the pressure, which is the force over the area, and the area over on the left-hand side is 0 0.012, sorry, pi times 0 0.012 squared, just like that. And then we're going to add on the rho GH of the additional fluid that's over on that left-hand side, everything that's above that green line, okay? So we add on the, uh, we'll go ahead and add that in. Looks like I didn't leave myself enough space there. That's what I get. So I'm gonna put in the density, which is 8.00 times 10 to the second, times gravity, which is 9.81, times the height, which they gave us is a 1.1 meter difference. And so at this point, you should be able to plug all the numbers in and solve for F using your calculator. Uh, and, and that should give you the right answer. So go ahead and do that, and hopefully you got the answer that F is 127 newtons. There you go, and notice how, uh, sorry, in the first one I did not put in three sig figs. I know you've probably been yelling at me about that for the last three minutes. So 131 newtons and 127 newtons. So notice that that big difference of the car Right, it went up or down 1.10 meters, only required an additional four newtons of force, okay? And that's what a hydraulic lift does, is it requires a lot less force. Now, of course, as we talked about in class, that's going to now be affected by distances and things like that, all right? The actual distance that it, that it moves and the actual distance that you have to, to plunge and that type of thing. All right, okay, so uh, with that, let us, I, I'm just gonna take one last, a couple of minutes here at the end. Okay, uh, there was a question asked, they said, well, Mr. Bywater, you've told us that pressure equals force over area, and you've also told us that pressure is equal to the ambient or initial pressure plus rho GH. What's the difference between those two and how do I know when to use them and, and that type of thing, all right? So uh, the, the answer to that question is that they give us different, I mean, they're both pressure, yes, but we use them in slightly different scenarios, though they're both always true, right? This first one, the pressure equals force over area, is more of a definition, right? Pressure is force over area. If somebody says the pressure is 27 pascals, we can then interpret that given a force or an area, we can then infer information about the other of those two, right? If the force is large, the area must be large. If the area is small, the force must be small, right? Those type of things we can infer given the information about the pressure and one of those two. Right, so we're making connections between those three variables. Um, the, the bottom one is usually used when we are finding a pressure at a location given information, right? And it's very often because of the rho GH, this is given to fluid being above it, right? If you have fluid above your current location, whether that be like a hydraulic where one side has fluid above a location and the other side doesn't, whether it be uh, you standing underneath the big blue sky and the atmosphere, which is a gas, therefore a fluid is pushing down on you, right? A lot, of, most of the time I would say that this second equation is more helpful in finding pressure due to your location, right? It's kind of like when you find uh, energy, gravitational potential energy, uh, that's an energy due to location. You can find that energy easily like that. Uh, you can also deal with energy kind of as work. How much work was required to get you from point A at the bottom of the mountain to point B at the top of the mountain, 
right? And so they both give you the same information. They can both be linked. And very often you can say force over area equals initial pressure plus rho GH, right? And you can make connections between the two because they are giving you the same thing. It's just the first one is more of a general thing when we're looking at an object that has a surface area and what is the force on that object. And the second one is more specifically, what is the pressure at this location? Or can I compare to different locations their pressures due to depth of fluid or not being deep in the fluid? All right, so I, I hope that that is uh, connecting. Um, someone also asked about uh, when we calculate total pressure, do we add them up? Okay, well, it, it just depends, right? This, the second equation here, really should cover everything, right? If we're talking about the force on an object, um, the force on an object due to the liquid or due to something else, that is going to come from this pressure right here, right? Because both the ambient pressure and the pressure of the liquid are going to come into play. Very often when we're measuring pressures, we don't care about the ambient. We don't care about what's going on outside, and that's when we give the relative or the gauge pressure, okay? Um, the, the other question that, that came up a lot that I'd like to address now is that uh, somebody said, well, pressure equals force over area, but Pascal's principle says uh, that the shape doesn't matter. Okay, well, the shape doesn't matter, but what does that mean? Pascal's principle is referring to that the force, uh, the, sorry, the pressure everywhere is the same or that it changes by the same amount. You have to recognize, though, that if you are, let's say we've got a piston here, right? And the piston... Uh, can be moved in or out, which means you're either increasing or de decreasing pressure inside. If I move this down, the pressure everywhere is going to change by the same amount. But the pressure at the top is not the same as the pressure at the bottom, right? That does need to be understood that when we're, when we're talking about Pascal's formula, we're talking about that the pressure should be changing by the same amount everywhere. If I add 10 pascals here, then I have to add 10 pascals down there, and I have to add 10 pascals over here, right? It has to affect everywhere the same. However, the pressure up at the top is not going to be the same as the pressure at the bottom, right? The pressure at the top has to be less than the pressure at the bottom because the bottom is under all of this fluid, which the top is not, okay? And so hopefully those are some ideas that maybe are helping to connect a lot of the ideas that we've put together so far. Um, if you have more questions, then shoot them over. We can talk about them in class. And uh, hopefully this is kind of pointing you in the right direction, helping you understand what's going on. All right, that's it.